So now uh, we have our surface in 3D floating in space and we want to add some 3D models to this. So first uh, let's zoom to the loop location where we want to add something. In this case we want to add a house to this abandoned quarry. And to add 3D models to uh, arc scene the easiest way is to uh, is as follows. So we start arc catalog and we go to our folder and we uh, create a new file geodatabase and in this file geodatabase we create a new feature class and we give it a name we'll just call this house and alias should also just be house not house okay shin or how let's call it house model house model and it's important that the type needs to be a multi-patch features. Okay, we go to next, and here we'll use the British National Grid. And as a vertical coordinate system, we'll use uh, one of the European ones. We'll use the EVF, EVRF 2007. We'll do. And all the other options should be fine as well. Okay. So now we can. Uh, can add our layer to our uh, set of layers or data sets and now if uh, now we need the 3d editor and to open the 3d editor uh, we need to right click here and then oh oh there it is it's outside the screen so here we have the 3d editor and uh, you create it by right clicking in the menu section and in the 3d editor and uh, we select our house layer and then we choose start editing And now here is our option to create features. And now if you click create features, uh, an extra panel will appear. We need to choose our layer and then we can choose the insert tool. And with the insert tool, we can just click somewhere on our layer, click here. And now we can choose our 3D model. And in this case, I'll use the model Casa Moderna. Um, and there we go. And there we go, there it is. And now let's change the cursor to a different type of cursor. Let's change the let's move around. And yeah, we can see our 3D model standing on the landscape over there. And if we were to click again with the insert tool, we'd add more houses, but one should be enough. And with this tool, we can select it. And then in here, there are options to move it, to rotate it, and to scale it. In this case, I'd say it looks pretty good the way it is, so it's not necessary to change anything. So in this case, we'll just do save edits and stop editing. All right, so that's our house in place. I can look at it from a different location. All right, and there we can see our house in the Camp Files core quarry. And the next step is to add some wind turbines to the scene. So I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to make a new feature class in our geo database. So do new uh, feature class and we'll call that turbine model. And just turbines for short. And again, it needs to be a multi patch and it needs to be. British National Grids, and then again, European EV RF 2007, and the rest should be fine. And now let's find a nice high um, high altitude to build our wind farms. So let's say let's pick this area here in the back. Let's build our wind farm over there. And if we add our wind farm layer turbine models here, and then it's the same thing. We go to uh, select it and go to 3D editor, start editing. We'll choose turbines, we'll choose insert tools, and then we click and we add a model for the winter for a wind turbine. This file 
and we've added our first wind turbine. In this case, I'm going to add multiple ones. Add them at sort of constant distance on top of this hill. And now we've created our uh, small wind farm. So let's stop edits and have a closer look in 3D. Ah, and there they are, our wind turbines on this hill. And we can sort of analyze the visibility of these wind turbines. And to do that, uh, we need to uh, first of all, we need to find the locations. We can't we can't just use the models themselves. So we need to uh, we need to go. So let's just browse through it here. And it should, I think it's in data management and uh, features feature two point exactly. That's what we need. And that will help us find the the coordinates of each uh, each wind turbine. So choose feature two point, and we select our turbines. And let's just choose let's go to our folder, campsies, and just call it turbine turbine points. Should do it. And click OK. Alright, and it's now added a new layer of these points. And we can't see it because it's below everything else, but now we can see the Make these points exactly below the wind turbines. Let's turn this back on, and now we can use this in a, a few shed analysis. So we go to 3D Analyst, and then we go to Visibility, and then we go to Few Shed. As the input raster, we'll choose our elevation model. For our observer points, we'll choose our turbine points that we just created. And as an output raster, we'll just uh, make something here, and we'll call it view shit. And it's important to also make an output uh, above ground level raster that stores the uh, the height that objects would need to be to be visible from a certain distance, because the view shed doesn't uh, take account of the height of the objects. And these wind turbines are pretty high. At least 65 meters probably for, for a typical wind turbine. So uh, let's make another layer and let's just do, let's call this um, let's call this above ground level raster. And set factor that should just be one or or our coordinates are in meters, so that should be fine. And earth curvature isn't really relevant at this scale, so let's click OK. And uh, this tool is fairly slow, so this can take a take a few minutes to run. Okay, so I fast forwarded through that uh, tool. It took a few minutes to run, um, and as you can see, it's now uh, completed, and it's created. Uh, it's created these files. So let's turn off the layers on top, and. So here we have the, the output from the view, view shed file. So uh, in pink we see the areas where, the, where it thinks the turbines are not visible. And in green it has the areas where it thinks the turbines are visible. And we can make this look a bit nicer by, by switching it to 3D. So we set the uh, base heights to the uh, elevation model. And that's nice now it's 3d but it still looks a bit flat so what we can do is go to rendering and then click this checkbox to shade it and then we can actually have well, we can get some shadows on there we get a much better idea of the geometry and we can now get out identify these little streams in here um so it's pinks it thinks that uh, the turbines would basically be visible very nearby um and, and down the and on the other side of the hill, but that seems a bit uh, counterintuitive. We, we know these windmills are fairly high, and they would probably be visible for a much wider area. And that is because the view shed function itself doesn't account for the height of the object that you're using. Um, but um, 
that's why we, we also calculated the, the height above ground layer. So if we can sh I'll show you this. Uh, so this is basically the height that objects would need to be uh, for, every, for every pixel. Um, if the if the if the object is um, somewhere is the scale work goes from zero to four hundred five. So where it's black, then uh, the the object doesn't need to be any high need to be high at all. Uh, whereas here in the white, it, the object here the wind turbine would need to be at least four hundred five meters. And because we know that the wind turbine is uh, probably about 65 meters. We can use that to filter this layer. We can just filter it in the symbology. We don't need to reclassify it. And so we go to properties, we go to symbology, and we change it from stretch to classified. And we need to, that's fine. And now we can just go to classify. And let's just change this break value to 65 meters that we're interested in and the rest can just stay the same and this class from 0 to 65 meters and so that's basically the, the, the parts where the windmills are going to be visible so let's, let's not set it to blue and now we've created a new layer and let's let's turn this layer 3D so go to properties and base heights and let's make it shaded, same, save so everything else. And now we can, can nicely see uh, the area where these windmills will be visible. So we can now see that in all the blue area these windmills will be visible. And the only parts of this elevation model where you can't see the windmills is down here in the valley near Lennox Town. Um, which makes sense because the, the view on a few to these wind turbines will be obscured by, by this big cliff here. The same for these valleys here in this deeply incised valley. It will also not be possible to see the, the wind turbines. Alright, so that's uh, how we can analyze visibility uh, with the Fuchsia tool.